Hello and welcome back to another episode of Flow with the Grow. I'm your host, Sophia, and this is a podcast for all things health, fitness, wellness, personal development, and kind of just me sharing my day-to-day life challenges, life updates, and just me going about my day navigating this life along and this journey along with yours in hopes that you can find some inspiration and relatableness and also tips to help you be a healthier and better version of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, whatever that means for you. And today I'm really excited because I'm going to talk about a topic that just kind of came to mind recently. I was my interest sparked while I was working out. I was working out barefoot like I always do. And the thought came to mind, hmm, I wonder if people have wondered why I walk around barefoot all the time, why I walked walked around barefoot at the gym, anytime fitness when I worked there, all the time, literally since day one, and why I work out barefoot. And I actually took a poll on my Instagram and Facebook stories to see if anyone was ever curious or wondered why. And actually, a lot of people were curious. And so I wanted to talk more about that. I wanted to talk about why initially I started doing that and then what I've learned along the way and benefits and risks to it and how you can start, maybe how you should start if you have never worked out barefoot before or you're just used to wearing shoes all the time, walking day to day, and then in your workouts. And I'm going to share also a few specific exercises that you can implement to start. So before I start that, I first wanted to make sure that you know that I still have a few spots open for my one-on-one coaching Something that really hit home for me that I listen or that I heard on another podcast episode was inspiration and motivation gets you going, but accountability keeps you going. So it's important to have an accountability plan. And I've talked about that in the past, but I think one of the most powerful, beneficial forms of accountability is to hire and invest in a coach or a trainer, whether that's in person training or a virtual coach. There's so much value to that whether it helps you stay accountable because you're investing in that financially, but also you have someone helping you guide you along the way. They are creating, I guess, depends on what coaches that you're hiring for, but in my case, in this case, I am creating the workout program. I'm helping you with daily habits for nutrition and behavior change and really focusing also on the mindset and mental health aspect of it. Like because of having a coach, they can really help you, guide you, and keep you accountable. So if you want to learn more about how you can work with me and more details on that, you can a few ways. Number one, email flow with the girl podcast at gmail.com. Number two, you can message me on Facebook or Instagram. My name is on Instagram is at Sophia underscore Dawn41. Or option three is if you go to my Instagram, you can actually just fill out a coaching interest form. If you go into my profile on my bio, there's a link tree and there's two options. One is for the podcast and one is for the coaching. So you can fill that out and then I will reach out to you. Okay, so starting from the beginning, when I started working at Anytime Fitness, I don't think I really had ever worked out barefoot before. But then I just kind of randomly, and I'm pretty sure this was literally like day one of me working there, maybe soon after that, I just decided to take my shoes off and like just wear socks. Um, When I was working, when I was training, when I was working out, I did not wear shoes. And to me, I didn't really know why. It was more of like instinctively, I felt like that was the natural thing to do. I felt like it was the right thing to do. It was like, instinctively and naturally, my gut was just telling me that that was okay. I didn't know why. I didn't know the importance of it. I didn't know the benefits of it. I didn't even know if it was benefiting me in any way. And years later, fast forward, I learn about the benefits and the importance of it. And it actually is the natural thing for us as humans to do. If you think about it, and this was kind of my mindset back then too, was we're not born with shoes, right? Like we're born just as is. And I've always kind of also instinct instinctively believed that we are equipped internally with the means and things that we need to survive. And then 
anything external, like man-made or whether it's food or shoes, like it not was a not that it was a crutch, but like I just kind of questioned like why wear shoes all of the time. I don't know, it might seem kind of weird, but bottom line, I just instinctively felt like it was the natural thing to do. And it was like this inner knowing, like my intuition knew that it was okay and it was actually beneficial. So I kept on doing it. No one really ever said anything other than me, maybe me just being known to not wear shoes. And then I just wore socks all the time around the gym and when I worked out. And also to me, when I worked out, that also felt like the natural thing to do. I began realizing that I could work on my stability more and like my ankle strength. And again, even though I didn't really know why it could benefit me to work out barefoot, I just did it anyways. So then throughout my years of coaching and training at the gym, I began to do my own research on not just barefoot training, but just training and coaching and working out in general. And over time, what I was learning was that what the feet are doing is actually so crucial and essential, but it has been overlooked and undertrained and undertaught. And I think most of us, like, we just don't think about it. It's natural to just think about the movement we're doing. So if it's a squat, it's the movement of squatting, going down, not necessarily thinking about, okay, what's my feet doing? What are my feet doing? How can I better the squat, improve the squat by focusing on strengthening my feet, the muscles of my feet and stabilization. And when we're doing maybe a dumbbell chest press or an overhead standing overhead press, like we're focusing on the movement in our upper body, not necessarily what our feet are doing. So I'm going to go into some brief benefits of working out barefoot and even just walking barefoot. And then I'm going to dive a little bit deeper, and I'm also going to, in the show notes, share some Instagram accounts, some links to some Instagram accounts that you can go to that provide some really, really good information on this and also visuals. I wish I could just post up some pictures on this podcast, but you'll have to go to these accounts that are some really, really good. And if I can link specific pictures, I will. But there's some really good photos and differences between an x-rayed foot of someone who has been wearing a shoe for forever versus someone who hasn't. And the differences between a foot, like the foot, the anatomy, the structure of a foot. And it's it's really cool to see. It's very interesting. So if you are wanting to learn more or check those out, you just are interested in that, I will link that in the show notes. And I highly recommend that you go check that out for yourself. So Benefit number one, foot and ankle stabilization. You will build a more stabilized and balanced foot and even just as a whole, like your entire body. So foot stability and balance. Also foot strength. So we have a lot of muscles in our feet. And just like we need to train all all the muscles of the body, that includes the feet. But we can't just jump into loading our bodies with bare feet when your muscles aren't stabilized, they're not balanced enough, they're not strong enough. So that's, I will go into the risks in a little bit and how to slowly progress into this, but that's just something to keep in mind that our muscles in our foot are important and we need to build the strength in them. Okay, so the next benefit is it allows your feet to function naturally. So not only do shoes affect stability and balance and weakened muscles in the feet, but shoes will not allow you to function or won't allow your feet to function naturally just as they are. So number one, foot stabilization and balance. Number two, strengthened muscles in your feet. Number three, natural functioning. Number four, Now, this one you have to slowly work towards and might not be something that you should jump into right away, but by working out barefoot, focusing on that, and by improving ankle mobility, ankle stabilization, and strength in your feet, this will allow you to have a deeper squat. One of the reasons that I have learned for why maybe I or other people can't squat 
lower than 90 degree is because of their limited range of motion in their ankles and not having good ankle mobility. Just like we need to have good hip mobility, we need to also have good ankle mobility to allow for that depth. Number five, this will also help you to become more aware of other parts of your body. So when I'm squatting or doing anything barefoot, I check in with my feet first. I ground my feet to the floor. I really try and articulate like my toes and my feet placement and all of that to the ground. And then as I'm squatting or doing an exercise, I really am aware and look at, okay, what are my feet doing as I go down? What are my legs and my knees doing and my hips? If I don't think about it and I just go into a squat, my feet will actually start to pronate in And therefore, my knees will start to go in. So I have to be really mindful to not let that happen. Think about my feet, stabilizing my feet and my ankles and becoming aware of what my knees and my hips are doing as well. So it just can create more body awareness. When you become more aware of this, when you become aware of this, you can control your body better, but also you can begin to work on maybe the root cause of a back issue or a knee pain issue or a hip issue. Like a lot of this actually stems from our feet, which again, we don't think about, but it all starts from the ground, the ground up. So once I started learning this, I started taking a look at my client's feet and I was really making and taking note of if their feet was moving a certain way, pronating in, and then what their knees and their hips, like everything, what what they were doing. So just something to think about, if you do have back pain, knee pain, hip pain, and just issues with all of that, it's likely that it's stemming from your feet and poor ankle mobility. Some other benefits include alleviating many causes of foot pain. It encourages optimal circulation to your foot tissues by reducing impingement on toe nerves and blood vessels helps eliminate overpronation, improves your balance, enables proper distribution of your body weight, provides stability to your ankles and knees, helps you to feel more grounded, and restores the naturalness of your feet and toes, the natural structure of your feet and toes. So when we are wearing shoes, especially like high heel shoes or shoes that have like the super narrow toe, uh, toes, like where it goes in narrowly, and this, you can see this in pictures, but it crams our feet together and actually changes the shape of your feet and of your toes. So by going barefoot, you can also naturally reverse that and position your toes back to their natural alignment. It also helps you to enable natural arch support. And so it's important to begin to know all of these and become more aware of the detriments that shoe wearing can provide because the function of your foot will suffer and your feet won't be able to function as optimally. There's a picture that I hope you go check out and it's actually from Squat University on Instagram, but it shows the foot of the feet of a modern businessman with the business shoes that they wear and it's kind of like a narrow end And then it compares it to, the picture compares it to a foot of a barefoot runner. And so the foot is a lot wider and more in alignment. The toes are more in alignment. Um, But then they ask the question of which foot do you think can create maximum stability to root the body to the ground during a squat or deadlift? And when you can see the picture side by side, it's like, wow, well, well, yeah, the purse, the feet with the barefoot runner that has the wider feet will be able to have more stability and to ground their feet a lot better during a squat and deadlift. You can see that they would have a lot more balance because the feet that has the narrow, the narrowness of the feet and the structure of the feet just shows and it looks like they just wouldn't have the stability and they would have not have the balance. Our feet were designed to have all of our toes completely flat on the ground when weight bearing. And this allows the toes to grasp the ground and provide stability for the entire foot and also therefore the rest of the body. When I was 
taking my notes for this episode, I came across a really good point that someone made. And he said, if you think about doing a handstand, would it be better to have your fingers spread wide for more surface area support or all the fingers held tightly together? And that's very true. The same is true for our feet. Other examples that show something similar that I found, and these examples refer to when you wear normal, traditional, supportive shoes, your muscles in your feet will tighten and weaken. Because of this, you may have tight calves. And he made the point that you can foam roll, you can massage massage all day long, and the tightness just doesn't go away. But when you get the toes moving like they're supposed to, then these calf muscle muscles can quickly loosen up. So the examples here, something to think about is think about how tight your shoulder muscles would be if you wore an arm sling for 20 years and think about how weak your neck would be if you wore a neck brace for 20 years and the foot is no different with shoe wearing. So when you change your perception of the type of shoes that you're wearing of your footwear and then the question is, well, what kind of shoes can I wear? Because obviously there's times when we have to wear shoes, but then Again, the question is, well, what shoes do you wear? And in the show notes, I will have links again to some of these places that you can check out. And a lot of it is on Instagram. But once you change your perception on it all, you know more, you're more aware, then you can make better choices so that you can start to move away from shoes that are actually damaging your feet, deforming your feet, and you can change the way your feet feel, perform, and look. Working in the gym, I also had a lot of clients, maybe not a lot, but some clients who had bunions and plantar fasciitis. And if that's you or you're struggling with, again, the pain in your knees, hips, back, and tight calf muscles, start with your shoes. Take a look at your shoes. And if they are, they are narrow tip shoes, start looking into shoes that will better support your foot as it should be and looking for more wide toe shoes. And in addition to that, of course, starting to walk barefoot more often. Now, getting into starting this process, because yes, it is beneficial to work out barefoot and walk around barefoot, but if you have been walking around and working out for years, maybe your entire life, wearing shoes, especially more so those narrow toed shoes and the shoes with maybe the elevated heel and um, shoes like popular brands like Nike and Adidas. If you're used to training in those, you are not going to want to just bam, switch out and load your back with a barbell and do a back squat. You're not going to want to go into the gym and get your normal training session on with loading weight. If you do that, you will likely cause problems because you are already adapted to your shoes. And if you think about it, you have been already developing biomechanics to fit with your shoes. You're, you're already you already developed the biomechanics based on your shoes. You're going to want to start slow, and this is going to take time, years. So you want to again slowly ease yourself into the barefoot training. Also something to think about is what you train more and more is what you get good at. And this was also part of my research and my note taking today for when I was getting ready for this episode. And one example that I came across was actually in a podcast episode and he used the example of a boxer. So a boxer trains all the time with their gloves and they're getting really good at that. They're getting used to that. And if they were to just throw off their gloves, then everything would kind of be thrown out of whack. Like their their perception and how they box would be completely different. And the same is true for wearing a lifting belt. If you wear a lifting belt all the time and then you take it off, it's going to be completely different. So same is true if you've been wearing shoes and you're used to that, then you go and take it off, it's going to be completely different. First of all, your shoe, your feet are probably not going to be as strong. Your feet are not going to have that support and ankle mobility and stabilization. You might even feel like you have more balance and stability wearing shoes because that is what you're used to. 
I'll try and link something in the show notes, but you could also Google pictures of hunters and gatherers, their feet versus a normal foot who wears shoes. But it was kind of crazy. The picture that I saw, their feet were very wide. Their toes were wide, separated, but it looked like a strong platform. So next here are five ways that you can start to slowly work towards barefoot training. Five ways that you can ease into this. The first is simply to walk around your home barefoot. So if you come home from work and you keep your shoes on, just take your shoes off and walk around barefoot the rest of the day or just whenever possible. And this includes going outside. There's actually a lot of benefit to also walking outside barefoot and on grass and dirt and sand and to the earth. This is called earthing, which I decided to not get into that today. And I did a previous episode on that a little bit a long time ago, but not going to get into that. So just number one, walking around your house barefoot and outside barefoot. That's where you can start. Number two, jump to balance. So when you jump, you land on your feet softly and balance. And you can also do this with just a single foot. So you jump and you land on one foot, not like a super long jump or anything, just a little jump to the side maybe or front or back and land on your foot and work on stabilization and on balance. Third, and actually this should maybe have been second because I would probably have you do this first before jumping, but that's just to simply stand on one foot and balance. So this is really helping. These two are both helping with stabilizing and improving ankle mobility and strength and stabilization. So you're just standing on one leg, trying to balance. Fourth, if you want to start introducing more into the weight room for your training, or if you have weights at home, but you can start by doing farmer carries barefoot. So you're holding on to two heavier dumbbells or kettlebells or plates or weights or whatever you have, making sure that you create tension in your upper body, your core, your legs, and you're just walking barefoot while holding those dumbbells. And then number five, this isn't a specific exercise, but you can also slowly introduce this by decreasing the load that you're using for your lifts. So when you're going to the gym, maybe you just do this for one exercise or maybe a couple exercises or just throughout your workout, but you're choosing lighter weights than you normally would with shoes. And you might have to take it a step back. Like maybe you're to the point where you're squatting barefoot and you've done body weight and now you're going to add weights, but maybe you realize it's too much weight and you back off a little bit. So start by walking around your house and outside barefoot, number one. Number two, jump to balance. Number three, stabilize and balance on one foot. Number four, farmers carry. And number five, throw it into your workouts, one exercise or just a couple in your workout and lower the weight that you're using. Like I said, this is going to take time and patience and it could take years, two years, three years, four years. I think it's important to first become aware that your shoes are maybe doing this to your feet and do some research, look at the pictures and read about it. And then you can start to slowly ease into it by doing any of what I just mentioned. And number one, just walking around barefoot. So I hope this episode was kind of more of just like an introduction to barefoot training and opened your eyes a little bit, maybe changed your perspective on working out and on the importance of just trying to balance on one foot and the ankle mobility and stabilization. And it'll help you in other lifts and bigger lifts and in the future and just as your human body for what it's supposed to naturally do. If you found this helpful or interesting, I'd love to know your thoughts on this. And you can also, of course, always share it with a friend. Feel free to shoot me a message on Facebook or Instagram and let me know what you thought. And if you are going to try barefoot walking and training in the future. And as always, thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. And I hope you have a great rest of your day, night, week, weekend. Bye for now. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Flow with the Grow. I'll see you next week for your daily dose of positivity and growth.